Okay, so if you guys have been following this channel a little bit, you know that I've started actually trying to get good at Street Fighter since Street Fighter 6 was on the verge of coming out. And I did that by learning Hugo in Street Fighter 3 first since I planned on learning Zangief in Street Fighter 6. Now, I have played tons of Street Fighter before this, but learning a grappler was something new to me and it was something very different. And as I started playing 3, I discovered the struggles that is playing Hugo in Street Fighter 3. And then as I've played 6, I've discovered the sometimes struggles of playing Zangief in Street Fighter 6, which had me questioning which one of these guys, which one of these big body grapplers is better or worse than the other. So for this video, I'm going to break down their offense, their defense, and their neutral, and try and figure out in their respective games which one is more bottom tier or more high tier than the other. Now, I will be comparing them based on game mechanics as well because we're not comparing them who would be better playing against each other. We're saying who is stronger in their individual game. So obviously system mechanics and game mechanics are going to play a factor in that. But with that said, why don't we start and let's talk about offense. I actually believe, which I didn't expect to believe going into this video, but I think Hugo has better offense than Zangief. Now, despite Zangief having all those drive rush shenanigans and drive rush combos and stuff like that, realistically, they both have the same sort of game plan, right? They want to walk you down, walk and block you to a corner, create this or, or close the distance and hit you with command grab mix-ups, whether that's SPDs or wall throws or whatever you may have, and hit you with their big buttons that tend to do a lot of damage. So why do I think Hugo's defense or offense is a little bit better than Zangief's? Well, to start, they're, they're honestly, they're pretty much the same. Both of them can get mid-screen Oki off command grabs in certain circumstances. Uh, Hugo, for example, if you space properly, which normally they have to be all the way over here, you can do Ultra Throw, that's uh, not Ultra Throw, into Lariat, and then boom, you got Side Swap, Oki, off Wake Up. If they're too close, however, this really is not something that's going to work, but there's other options to do that, so if we're close to the wall, and we do that, we can just get Standing Heavy Punch and knock him down anyway, and there, boom, Oki. Both of them lose Oki on their SPDs. I want to get that out because back roll will put them away from it and then we're back into the neutral which we'll get to neutral when we get to neutral what i think makes hugo better at offense than zangief is he actually has a high low mix up now both of them rely on the strike throw sort of guessing games especially on oki am i going to hit you with the big button whether it's clap combos with hugo right or uh, medium punch combos with Zangief sort of thing or am I going to command grab you for big damage the problem is that's where Zangief's offense ends Hugo on the other hand not only does he have the universal overhead mechanic that every character has in Street Fighter 3 he also has this heavy punch button which does a lot of damage and is an overhead and does an obscene amount of stun as well so it can make that corner pressure and that Oki situation a lot scarier because if you're holding down back either to stop the sweep, which is pretty good for Hugo as well, or because you're worried about the clap combos, then boom, he can hit you with this. And if you stop holding that, he can sweep you low and then start up his pressure again and then boom, right? So that creates that system that if you don't respect sort of meaty pressure, it can be a lot more damaging for you in the long run. On top of that, Hugo also has better options in the corner for damage than Zangief does. Because again, if Zangief gets you with an SPD, yeah, you're still in the corner, but he's going to end up over here. Maybe he drives Rush in, he closes the gap a little bit, but he's still not really a threat to get you with another SPD. In the corner, Hugo's SPD actually does worse damage than his Ultra Throw, Clap, Light Backbreaker comp. So as you can see, that does 46 damage versus his heavy SPD, which is going to do 41. And it's still going to keep him in close range, meaning you can do Ultra Throw, Clap, Backbreaker, whenever I can do it again, and then be up close enough to hit a meaty, meaty elbow on stun. So again, 
Both of them, similar, very similar game plans, but very different. Or a couple key advantages for Hugo where you can do this, walk up, boom, meaty elbow. It's going to do a ton of stun. It's going to rack up the damage. Pretty good, because even still, this does 31 damage. So that on top of 46, that's a mix-up that's doing 76 damage on a crouching opponent if they wake up. Pretty strong. So yeah, for that reason, I'm going to give the offensive advantage to Hugo in this sort of comparison. Now, I didn't really want to discuss supers because they both have the same set of supers. Geef does get an advantage that he has access to all three of his supers at the same time. But uh, essentially, you have your 720, which is going to do an obscene amount of damage on both of them. You have your anti-fireball rush super, which is a little bit better for Zangief, because I don't think a Hugo's actually has fireball and vulnerability, because there's nothing like that in this game. And then they both have their anti-air super, which Hugo's is significantly better, not only because he can set it up off of an ultra throw, you can do that into it if I had it, but you can also just reliably get it out of the air. So yeah, offense, point goes to Hugo. So let's look at defense now. This is where both Hugo and Zangief really, really, really struggle. They're bad at defense. Their only invincible wake up or only form of wake up is going to be their level three. Zangief has his level two, but it's, you know, their super SPD command buster, this move. That's gonna be safe wake up for either of them. And it's gonna be a very punishing wake up and it's gonna be the thing that's gonna scare a lot of players off of Automa or automating their offense when you're in the corner or just in the floor because if you're meeting this guy repeatedly and I wake up with Gigas Buster we're gonna do about half your life especially if you go for a meaty low so yeah that's essentially the number one tool they have for defense on both of them both of them do rely a lot on making proper guesses defensively and now the thing is, Hugo, in general, relies a lot on the parry system in Street Fighter 3. Parries in Street Fighter 3 are quite strong, but they're quite high risk, and it can often lead to Hugo getting beat up quite a bit in the corner. Especially if you mistime it, or you misread it, and you go for a low parry, and the guy goes high, and you go for a high parry, they go low. Not to mention, Hugo has a lot of character-specific combos that people can use against him because of his large size making infidence easier, making certain mix-ups easier, making unblockables possible. He just gets beat up if you let them get their offense going. Zangief, on the other hand, while he has similar issues, he has a couple bigger advantages. One, the system mechanics definitely help him a lot more. Parry is significantly stronger in Street Fighter VI than it is in Street Fighter III. I know it doesn't seem that, but the reason it's stronger is because Perfect Parry offers you the same sort of defensive advantage of being able to take your turn back off of a read you made on the opposing attacker. But I can parry safely while blocking, and if I mistime it, still defend against the meaty taking no pressure. Whereas if I mistime a parry with Hugo, I'm going to eat that combo, I'm going to eat that damage, I'm going to be back into that Oki mix-up that that character is going to put on me. Secondly, and probably the bigger one, anti -airs. Hugo does not really have good anti-airs. His best anti-air is this jump medium punch here, which is godly. It's a really, really good air-to-air -air jump medium punch. Very effective. But it can always be good, and it gets you beat up a lot by, like, uh, Akuma Demon Flip setups and stuff like that, because you have to react a lot earlier. I know you're thinking Backbreaker has an anti-air. Less so. The problem is, Backbreaker has no inv invulnerability. You can just get hit. So air fireballs by Akuma are a guaranteed win for Akuma. Early buttons are very long active buttons from a lot of these characters beat it. Air Tatsu beats it. There's just so many free ways for your enemies to air to jump in on you when you're Hugo that it makes anti-airing so hard. Now you can realistically use just this headbutt coach medium punch, but it's so committal that if the opponent reads this and parries it, it's just certain trouble. His anti-air jab is too low, so you get hit in the head when you do it first. You got nothing moving upwards, really. Like, there's just nothing for Hugo could do as an anti-air outside of jump back medium punch. And even still, you're reading it, because if you miss it wrong, you're in trouble. Zangief has Lariat. Lariat in Street Fighter VI, even though it doesn't stop cross-up, even though it doesn't protect a small part of his head if it's a very tight neutral jump like in the corner, 
it's still an extremely good, free, easy to use, easy to react with anti-air that really helps him on the defensive spot. Because if you have players worried about you doing a wake-up super and they neutral jump, well, you can lariat if you don't want to try risking a uh, air SPD sort of thing. So defensively, even though they're both pretty weak at it, Zangief definitely takes that advantage. Now the final thing we're going to talk about when we're comparing Hugo in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike to Zangief in Street Fighter 6 is going to be their neutral. Another aspect that both of them are really bad at in their respective games. Now, we're going to start with Hugo because there's one thing that makes him very... He makes him pretty decent at neutral when your opponent doesn't know what they're doing, but it makes him really bad at neutral when your opponent does know what they're doing. And that's this medium punch button. So this looks like a really good neutral button. It does good damage. It's got good pushback. It's strong. It's got great range. Yeah, you can absolutely harass a lot of people with this button until you realize that it is minus five on block. And the problem with this being minus five on block is there are a ton of super arts in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike that are three frame startups or four frame startups. So there's actually a lot of ways that this move, his best neutral poke, is punishable on block. For example, Ken, one of the most prolific characters in both Street Fighter games, but very prolific in Street Fighter 3, his best super, his Jinrai super, punishes this on block. Doesn't matter the distance, it will punish. Chun-Li's SA2 will punish this button on block. So all of a sudden, whipping this button out in the neutral is very dangerous because you can just get supered for big damage and Oki and then the other person takes their way. Another issue Hugo has is he has no sort of neutral skip or invulnerability or armor to help him deal with the fireball game. His best option would be his version of the running bear grab to push you into the corner, but this is heavily reactable. It's not the fastest. It's got distance related and if people are hucking plasma at you, you're stuck walking and parrying, walking and blocking, and moving your way in. What's even worse in Street Fighter 3 for Hugo is there is a ton of pushback on fireballs. The reason behind that is they want really want to add an importance on parrying in this game. So what you're going to do is you're going to see a lot of people shooting fireballs, and if you're blocking them, you're going to get pushed back a significant distance along the stage. And that's going to make walking blocking to get in even harder, and you're going to have to jump, and then you're going to jump, and you're going to eat a dragon punch, and it, it's all a mess. Zangief, on the other hand, his drive rush isn't very good, so we're not even going to worry about that. But he has other tools in neutral that can help him get in. His standing light kick has pretty decent range, and it is cancelable, which means you can spend three bars on block or on hit to rush in with that standing light kick and put them into an SPD mix-up or into a meaty strike throw sort of situation. His rush and running bear grab is a little bit faster, a little bit harder to react to, so if you have guys who are backing up waiting for you to push buttons, you can catch them off guard with that at certain distances, especially when you make it close enough that it doesn't come out as the big I'm coming grab and more of the little sweeping suplex. So that definitely gives him advantage as well. And his standing heavy punch is armored on charge. Now, it's not armored on frame one, which means it's not easy to just react with this every single time. And it can be punishable with drive impact, which makes it high risk as well. But it does provide a lot of utility when mixed into the neutral play to punish the other players who are using some bigger but committal buttons at range. Uh, Manon, for example, has her really strong uh, heavy kick which is a good button against Geef because it covers so much distance, it's not easy to react to, and it's pretty safe against him and his entries. However, if you can read this with the standing heavy punch, you can absorb the first hit, hit him with the knockdown for it, push him to the corner, make some spread from there. So that's a big plus for Geef. Another big plus for Geef in this sort of neutral gameplay between him and Hugo is Geef's medium punch is significantly better. Yes, the first hit is incancible. Yes, the second hit is drive impactable. But in general, you can get a combo off it, which leads to a knockdown on that the medium punch, medium punch, medium punch target combo. It's pretty safe to hit the first one and then cancel into other things. If spaced properly, it leaves you in perfect distance for light SPD. There's a lot more mix-up tools range-wise in the neutral to give Geef a chance. 
his sweep, much like Hugo's, because Hugo does have a good sweep, is also very good. And that tends to be a good mix-up tool for both of them in the neutral play. They both have a pretty good 4-frame, 3-frame button. So Geefs is 4 frames as fast as his crouching light kick. Same thing with Hugo here. He's got his crouching light kick. Again, similar, good range. Not much to it. It's good at the checking rushes, checking dashes, that sort of thing. But the more options that Geef has just to make his way in, the better. Not only does he have better jump-ins in general, because Hugo's jump-ins are more air-to-air -air jump ins Geef has a couple that are going to hit really low and give him a very good early jump in damage for people who are reacting late. He's also got great cross up with the body splash, which they both do. They have body splash in the combo, whether it's uh, body splash in the hand clap or body splash into uh, lariat sort of setups. Either way, Geef is just stronger in the neutral based off system mechanics and just a few better buttons to give him a little bit more balance and his better range on his SPD. His light SPD's range is kind of ridiculous which means you can be walking down and punishing a few things at good distances a lot safer and a lot easier than Hugo does. And then finally, the last point to really hammer home that I do think, despite Hugo's better offense, Geef is a much better character, is Geef's SA2 in neutral gives him a fighting chance against a lot of these zoner characters. Remy is a nightmare matchup for Hugo, and Guile traditionally has always been a nightmare matchup for uh, Zangief. SA2 makes that matchup more of a bad dream instead of a nightmare. It still sucks, but being able to punish a boom into a force knockdown, into Oki pressure for a good chunk of damage, maybe corner switching, getting Guile into the corner, building meter, either way, it's an option to make the Guile have to think, especially in late game situations, about throwing booms out all willy-nilly. Now he has to worry about, okay, will SA2 kill me? And if it does, I can't throw this boom because he might react to it and, and do big damage. And you have a pretty decent window to react with Super Arc 2. It's pretty good at punishing fireballs for certain. So yeah, when it comes down to it, after playing both of these characters and learning both of these characters, as much as I really enjoyed playing Hugo and as much as I think Hugo is a fun character to play, it is pretty clear to me that Zangief definitely is the better of the two characters in their respective games. Now, some people might think this is obvious because I know there's current debate right now that Zangief is actually not bottom tier, but actually a secret top tier if you're really good at them. And Snake Eyes won his CPT event because Zangief's actually broken and Daigo's been playing Zangief because he's actually broken. But if we're being honest, it's, it's not the case, right? Like he is still a struggle to play and big bodies will always be a struggle to play because they're the hardest, in my opinion, some of the hardest characters to balance. Either they make them too strong and they win really easily, or they make them too weak and it's difficult for them to get going. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this sort of breakdown of the pros and cons of both Hugo and Zangief. And uh, maybe I'll do more of these in the future talking about other characters in cross games as to which one is better or worse than the other one. I've already considered talking about Street Fighter 3 Ken versus Street Fighter 6 Ken since there's always the top tier debate about them. There's always the Street Fighter 6 versus Street Fighter 5 Luke as well. And there's Ryu in every single game that he's in. So yeah, let us know down in the comments which comparison you would like to see. I'll tell you right now, I don't mind doing Yun and Jamie, but I think there's no point. Yun is clearly better than Jamie. And uh, thank you for watching. Talk to you later.